So in the last video, we found out that in order to come up with a normalizable solution, we would have to require this recursion formula to stop at some point. And then we can stop this recursion formula from generating further terms by allowing that 2j plus 1 to be minus k to be equal to 0. So essentially, we need to choose a point where we want this recursion formula to stop. So I can choose some integer n such that as j reaches n, this recursion formula will stop. And we can only stop this, as I mentioned before, by allowing that 2j plus 1 minus k to be equal to 0. So if I choose n to be the point where this recursion formula stops, that means k is going to be equal to 2n plus 1. And under this choice of k, uh, the recursion formula will stop when j reaches n. And under this choice, the constants that you generate will lead you to a h of y, which would lead you to a uh, xi of y. And then for a choice of n, the xi of y that you obtain will correspond to the stationary state that has an energy level that is equal to h bar omega times n plus 1 half. So this is going to be the energy level of the quantum harmonic oscillator. So this is what we found in the previous video. We found the energy levels of the quantum harmonic oscillator, which corresponds exactly to what we obtained using the algebraic method before in the previous section. So now that we've found the energy levels, let's see if we can use what this recursion formula to generate the xi of y's. So uh, one obvious choice uh, we could test easily is n equal to 0. So if we choose the recursion formula to stop at n equal to 0, we would expect that the xi of y that we would obtain in the end to be equal to xi naught the xi naught that we accounted in the previous section when we were using the algebraic method, so the zeroth stationary state. So before we move on, I'm going to have to change this recursion formula slightly. So right now we can see that our recursion formula is in terms of k, but now I'm going to change it to become in terms of n. So now it is in terms of the value which I want the recursion, value, uh, recursion formula to stop. So under this choice, I can just do a slight re rearrangement. So this is what we're going to get. So using this, let's try to generate some solutions. Let's see how all this, all these concepts work in action. So let's deal with the simple case first. Let's deal with the case where n equal to 0. And if all goes well, we would expect uh, ourselves to generate something that would correspond to, that would look uh, similar to xi of y. So uh, starting with this, so in this case, we're going to choose n to be equal to 0. So in that case, that means our recursion formula is going to be equal to substituting 0 over here. So we get negative j, aj, j plus 1, j plus 2. So obviously, I can just take away the negative sign. So we're going to start off with a naught. We don't know what a naught should be, so we're going to have to figure this out later on, possibly using normalization. So don't forget that our h of y is equal to an infinite series that looks like this. So in order to find our h of y, we need to find all these constants. So let's just start with a naught. So starting with a naught, we can just substitute it into this recursion formula to obtain a2. And then as you can see, because we've this is essentially the choice where we want the recursion formula to stop at n equal to 0. And we start off with j being equal to 0. So the next step, a2, is actually going to be equal to 0. So at the first step, we have already chopped off the recursion formula. So as you can see, I can just substitute a0 over here. So j is just going to be equal to 0. So you have 0 multiplied by something. So a2 is going to be equal to 0. That's why a4 is equal to 0, because you just substitute a2 here to get a4. And all the subsequent terms, they are all going to be equal to 0. And then for the odd terms, I will also have to set them to be equal to 0. Otherwise, if I don't set a1 to be equal to 0, I will keep on generating these further constants with odd subscripts, and then the solution will, be, uh, will not be normalizable. So this has to be the case. So what this means is that we have essentially found all these constants over here. We know that a1, a2, a3, and all the subsequent a's, they are all going to be equal to 0. So all that remains of h of y is actually just a0. So recall that going back to the to what we were looking for in the first place, at first we were trying to look for xi of y. And then xi of y is equal to h of y times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So in this case, h of y is just equal to a constant. So it turns out that for n equal to 0, 
our sine of y is equal to a naught times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So this is going to be our answer. So a of a naught, this constant over here, can be found using, normaliz uh, using normalization. So if you integrate the square of this, this is going to be have to be equal to 1. So you can just integrate this function over here, and you can, you can obtain what a naught should be. So uh, if you work, the, uh, work those uh, details out, you see that this will actually be equal to the xi naught, the xi naught that we, were, that we managed to obtain in the previous section using the algebraic method. So you can check this out yourself. So now let's do another example. Now let's consider n equal to 1. So now I'm going to choose n equal to 1. So the recursion formula is going to stop when n is equal to 1, no, when j is equal to 1. So once again, let's write out the recursion formula. So in this case, j is equal to 1. So I'll just substitute 1 over here. So I get negative 2. And then this time I get 1 minus j times a j. And then j plus 1, j plus 2. So I don't know why Griffiths chooses to put the negative sign outside, because in the end, we'll just take it away like that. But uh, this is going to be our recursion formula for this case. And then using this, uh, let's try to find all the constants. So let's start off with a1. So a1, we don't know what this should be. Again, we, we can find this later on using uh, normalization. And then using this recursion formula, we will be able to find a3. So a3, we just substitute a1 back into here. So that is the case when j is equal to 1. And of course, 1 minus 1, that's just equal to 0. So we get 0 times something. So a3 is going to be equal to 0, which was what we would expect because we're choosing n equal to 1. We want the recursion formula to stop and n is equal to 1. So we've chopped off the recursion formula already. And then because a3 is 0, a5 is 0, a7 is 0, and then all the subsequent terms, they're all equal to 0. All the subsequent terms with the odd subscript, they're all equal to 0. And then as before, we need to choose the terms with the even subscripts to be equal to 0 as well. Otherwise, the even subscripts will just keep generating further terms non-stop, and then the solution will be not be normalizable. So what this means is that for the case of n equal to 1, our h of y is equal to, once again, it's equal to this expression over here, so a2. And then as you can see, all these terms are all equal to 0, except for a1. So h of y in this case is equal to a1 times y. So what this means is that our xi of y, which is equal to h of y times e to the power of negative y squared over 2, is going to be equal to some constant times y times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. And this is our solution. So once again, you can find what a1 should be by using normalization. And if you work this out, you'll see that this corresponds exactly to xi of 1, the xi of 1 that we, were, that we managed to find in the previous section. So now let's move on to our last example. So let's try this process out one more time. But this time it's for n equal to 2. So we just do the same thing as we did before. First, we find the recursion formula. In this case, we just substitute 2 over here. So in the end, we get that a of j plus 2 is equal to 2 times j minus 2 a j j plus 1 j plus 2. So now, once again, we start off with a a naught. We don't know what a naught should be, but then we can use this to generate a2. So a2, we generate a2 by substituting uh, j equal to 0 into this expression, so we get 2, 0 minus 2, a naught, so we get 0 plus 1, that's just equal to 1, 0 plus 2, that's equal to 2. So these cancel out. So you see that a2 is equal to negative 2 a naught. So you see that now that n is larger, our recursion formula doesn't immediately stop, so we manage to generate a2. But then for a4, is going to be equal to 0, because if you su try to substi uh, substitute a2 inside here to generate a4, j is equal to 2, so you got 2 minus 2, 0 times something, you get a4 is equal to 0. And so because of this, all the subsequent terms, they are all going to be equal to 0. So the recursion formula is topped off over here at j equal to 2, which is what we were expecting. And then once again, as before, for all the terms of the odd subscript, they are all equal to 0, because we need to stop the recursion formula from generating numbers indefinitely because that will lead to a, a solution that will not be normalizable. So in this case, we managed to find two, uh, we have two constants. We have a naught, and then we have a2, which is equal to negative two a naught. 
So once again, we can find our AH. So always recall what the actual expression for H of Y should be. So in this case, A0, we can just retain that. A1, A3, and all the odd terms, they're all just equal to 0. All the subsequent even terms are all equal to 0. So the only thing we have left is A2, which is equal to 2 A0 Y square. So you see that I can just pull out an A0 and I get 1 minus 2 Y square. So that means our xi of Y, which is equal to H of Y times E to the power of negative Y square over 2, is equal to A0 times 1 minus 2 Y squared times E to the power of negative Y squared over 2. So this is our answer. And once again, you can obtain A0 by using uh, normalization. And then if you work this out, you see that this will correspond exactly to Xi of 2. So you can check that this out if you're interested. So now we've done three examples. We've checked out the case for N equal to 0, N equal to 1, and N equal to 2. Uh, N equal to two. And then you can see that the solutions look pretty much the same. We have a constant, we have e to the power of negative y squared over 2, and then in the middle we have this polynomial. So this polynomial, it starts off with just 1 over here, so there's nothing here, so you can just imagine there being a 1. And then for n equal to 1, it turns into a y, and then for n equal to 2, it turns into a 1 minus 2 y squared. So the, uh, the, these polynomials will just keep on evolving if you choose a higher and higher value for n, and turns out that uh, the uh, polynomials that you get are a special class of polynomials known as the Hermite polynomials. So in the book, Griffiths gives you uh, a chart and a formula on how to generate these Hermite polynomials. And uh, in the end, the final solution, psi of y, is actually given by this expression over here. So this is after normalization. You have this normalization constant. So this is going to be the case for the choice where j is equal to n. And you have h n of y, so this is the Hermite polynomial. So in the previous case over here, for n equal to 2, the Hermite polynomial is equal to 1 minus 2 y squared. And then for n equal to 1, it's just equal to y. So in the later problems, we will come to deal with a bit more of the properties concerning the, these uh, Hermite polynomials. And then of course we multiply this by e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So this is going to be the final solution.